Welcome to this new learning bites from Juniper Educational Services. My name is Erminio and during the next minutes I will guide you through a discovery of uh, NAS 6 on Juniper SRX platform. In order to get started, I will inform you that uh, the current bytes is really divided in two parts. In, during part one we will focus on uh, router advertisement, DHCP v6 acquirement and uh, NAS 6 translation. During the second part instead we will complete our roundup through a discovery of the NAT64 DNS is for technologies, which will allow us to achieve connectivity to IPv4 from IPv6 only hosts. Please note that the focus of the current byte is indeed on IPv6 only hosts. That means hosts that are, don't uh, have enabled either an IPv4, IPv6 dual stack, or IPv6 to IPv4 tunneling methodologies. Also, to your own benefits, I inform you that the current byte is being recorded with an SRX branch running on uh, Juno's version 12.1. Some prerequisites for the current byte are that you currently have some knowledge of the IP protocol stacks, a basic understanding on IPv6 addressing schemes, familiarity with network address translations, and also a basic understanding of the DNS code and main records. Also, as a caveat, I have to inform you that even if uh, um, current support of IPv6 uh, is quickly increasing on the client side, there is still a wide variety of behavior on the different OS uh, uh, replies to um, IPv4 configurations. I therefore uh, strongly suggest you to check your own OS if you want to replicate the current byte in a production settings. Also, in case you were unsatisfied by what provided by your current uh, um, OS stack implementations, an alternative from the client side could be the open source program called Dibbler, which is available at the provided download uh, link. Let's jump now to the setup of our IPv6 only host, which is a Mac OS X running on version uh, Mountain Lion. I'm currently connected for recording purposes through the wireless network card, which is currently uh, reachable through a manually defined IPv6 only uh, address. In fact, there is no IPv4 configuring here, with no router setup or gateway setup, and no DNS. I will now move on to enable a packet capture on the second interface, which I will enable. Our wired uh, uh, network card. And we see immediately that uh, there are packets exchanged with the HTTPv6 uh, and DNS, which are already flowing behind the scenes. Now, let's quickly review the configuration of this card after um, the, um, it has become fully operational. So we currently have this IP address ending in 200 from Fox Charlie 00 2000 range, with a router address which has been defined in uh, um, a local link address uh, uh, setup. Fox Echo 80, and uh, with the DNS also being acquired through the SCP. At this point, let's jump on to our SRX device to see how all of this was achieved. So the first section that we will examine will be the router advertisement section. We see in here with the prefix configuration with a slash is for identifying and no autonomous, which means that really uh, we need to acquire additional parameters from uh, GCPv6. Then let's move on to assigning our GCP configuration. We see now here the low high range with the 200 address that has been acquired by this host and the DNS server set up for the same GCP v6 range. The final piece of configuration in order to have all of this working is really to link the DHCPv6 setup with the interface. 
which is what we will do with the next stanza statement. We see now that this, uh, um, this setup has been applied to a VLAN 2000, which is the one that uh, uh, we're currently connected to, to which we are currently connected through the wire, our wired adapter. Now, because we have um, we are running on a security device, it's important that we assign, of course, our uh, interface to a zone, which is what we have done, what I've done in this part where everything actually has been allowed for this interface. And after assigning this interface to a zone, I also define a trust to untrust policies to allow outbound traffic from the IPv6, NAT66, NAT64 zones to the untrust uh, uh, zone where actually our internet connection is currently configured. So let's have a look at these policies. And we see that everything is allowed. Now, let's go back for a minute to our presentation. And we saw at this point that we acquired through IRAs and, uh, and Slack plus GCPv6 a configuration of uh, a new LA address. ULA is addresses or unique uh, local addresses in the IPv6 world are basically the equivalent of the IP, uh, IPv4 private address schemes which, uh, we are, um, which you probably are already very familiar with. Now, considering that we have achieved connectivity or proper IP layer free connectivity in the IPv6, we should at this point be able to communicate with IPv6 source. Let's give it a try. Let's go back to our CLI. And uh, Let's start by doing some tests. In the most basic format, we start by pinging our Google's IPv6 DNS. We see that we're currently failing to achieve Google uh, by IPv6 address. So what could have been the problem at this point? Well, let's go back to our presentation for a second. And the problem is currently being that, uh, as said before, we're presently running on a new LA address sitting on the Fox Charlie 00 slash 7 uh, range. These addresses really are not routable and need, need to be translated to a publicly routable IPv6 address. Now, NAS 6 is currently and surely uh, extensively supported by Juniper Junos and uh, references to the RFCs regulating this uh, NAS 6 translation are provided in this slide. The final status of our next configuration should be the following one. We want to really translate our ULA address sitting on VLAN 2000 to our IPv6 routable address currently assigned to our point-to-point -point interface and which is sitting in this range, which is publicly routable address. Now let's have a look again to how we can do this in uh, Juniper SRX, Juniper Junos. And let's go back to our CLI mode. Now, the first thing we have to define is really a pool identifying the translating um, address of our source NAT 66. The second one, the second thing that we need to complete is really a NAT translation rule. Now we see in this case we have utilized a zone translation rule from the zone that we saw before identified as IPv6 nat 6 nat 4 to the zone untrust where our uh, public interface is currently sitting. And we also see that we have actually a rule defined at this point but the rule has been disabled or is currently showing an inactive status. So let's activate rule 2000. Let's provide a show compare to make sure that this is what's going to happen, the only change that we're going to push our device, and eventually let's commit our configuration. However, before doing this, 
and just for testing purposes. We will start again our uh, um, ICMP6 pings to our DNS, Google DNS destination, and wait for the commit to complete in order to see if the current problem has been fixed. Yeah, we start seeing some replies from our Google destination. We see that the commit was completed, and indeed, at this point, we have a full IPv6 connectivity to the IPv6 world. The next thing to check, of course, is that our DNS is working properly. So let's do again a ping 6 to google.com, and we see that we got translated. We can, at this point, start using our browser and start uh, having a look of uh, the newly achieved IPv6 world. We see that, of course, DNS shows up, but there are other sites that are enabled for IPv6 already. Of course, Juniper website is achievable through IPv6 addresses. You see here the portal of Juniper website. Just like Facebook recently enabled IPv6 functionalities on their servers, and additional sites which are always related to the IT world are the following one. I will show you these two additional ones. The first one, 60.ch, which really gives you a list of the currently enabled websites running on IPv6. And the second one, which we will uh, use for testing, really, our IPv6 addressing schemes and uh, confirming that even from the public side, what we currently see is only our translated IPv6 address, and that we currently have no IPv4 addresses assigned or reachable through this link. Let's go back to this point. to our uh, um, SRX device. Let's, let's have a look at the flow sessions of the IPv6 table on our SRX device. We see that we have already a bunch of sections created. Some sections are really ma matching the uh, HTTP traffic. You see TCP, TCP. Some other sections were instead related to the ICM uh, CMP v6 that we were issuing before. Now, in order to appreciate the difference between uh, uh, our current status and uh, the status that we want to achieve during the second part of this bias, let's have a look instead um, to some IPv6 only enabled website. Now, we see at this point that CNN.com fails really to resolve. Just like I Amsterdam, Apple.com, which apparently is still not enabled for IPv6 addresses, and BBC.com. All of these websites are currently not showing up. And if we have a look at the DNS trace, we see that we're really sending out queries. They are returning empty, empty records, though. We see here that there is really no records for a quad day, right? Quad, uh, quad day, uh, IPv6 address. Now, let's wrap up, at this point, what we have just achieved. And another thing that we can do in order to confirm this is uh, using the power of Juniper Juno CLI and perform a dequery directly from, the, uh, Juniper, uh, um, uh, the, from our Juniper device. So let's start a shell session to BSD. And from BSD, let's do a dig. We 
for a quarterly record. Okay, we see that really the section is empty, and we can compare, in fact, with the IPv6 address that we achieve when we try the same query with the um, Juniper.net enabled website. So at this point, we have really demonstrated and we have really seen how to perform connectivity to an IPv6 world through an IPv6 only host, and how, however, we to fail connectivity to IPv4, IPv4 world from the same host when there are no dual stacks on or tunneling methodologies that we can rely on. The follow-up of this byte will really be based on how we're going to fix the current problem. And I want to naturally thank you for watching this byte, and I look forward you, to, I look forward to hosting you in the second part of the same uh, um, of the same section. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.